coverage right now. Uh, the president of the Greater Austin Chamber of Commerce is with us in studio. Mike Rollins joins us uh, to talk a little bit about why Austin was chosen as the first stop on President Obama's tour. Well, Brian, it makes sense that Austin is chosen. Austin is the largest uh, city in um, creating jobs over the last nine years uh, in the United States. We're an innovation economy. Entrepreneurs have flourished here. And I think there's no better example where you can see where education attainment is a direct correlation to quality of life and job opportunity than Austin. We have seen where the uh, Texas unemployment rate is significantly less than the national unemployment rate, a testament to Texas. In fact, Austin just sent a contingent over to California uh, trying to recruit some companies to move here. How did that go? Well, Brian, it went well. I just got reports back uh, earlier today. Uh, we visited a number of companies in the Bay Area. They already had Austin on their list as places one that they wanted to explore in even relocating their headquarters or opening new operations here. I think that's a testament to the policies that at the Texas level the governor has set for a number of years. It's a low tax state, low regulation, and reasonable tort reform. And I think that's the ingredients uh, combined with Austin to be a successful economy. President Obama will speak at uh, Maynard New Tech High School. Then he has a scheduled stop at the Omni Hotel downtown mid-afternoon. And then he's headed back uh, east to Applied Materials, a leader in the semiconductor industry. And he will give another speech there. We will carry that one live a little later on this afternoon. Um, but his view for economic recovery is um, largely based on this bridging the gap between education and our tech industry kind of explain how austin fits into that equation very good yes austin um, really has been a leader in trying to bridge that um, we at the chamber have been working for the last six years on getting more of our graduating high school seniors matriculating into post-secondary education whether that's to earn a certificate in a skill area two-year degree or four-year degree so we have moved the needle from 52% just a few years ago going into post-secondary education to about 64% here in Austin. And Maynard New Tech High School, uh, one of those schools that does bridge the gap. They reach out to uh, those in the industry. It's a large collaboration with businesses, kind of this uh, student-driven project-based learning. No question on that. Um, it was set up uh, with a technology company's help, as you've indicated earlier. It has proven this point that connecting students to real business and real opportunities will produce college-going students. Any challenges that kind of stick out to you that maybe we're still kind of facing an uphill battle when it comes uh, to the middle class and the jobs and opportunity sector? Well, we still have a little bit unbalanced. Uh, we have more need for skilled workers than we have workers available to go to work for our technology companies. So we are challenged, and that's where we're looking at the long-term view of this with our high school level students, and then we're looking at ways taking our existing adult, for, adult workforce and putting them in, in skilled training programs right now. Of course, President Obama uh, has made the economic rec recovery um, part of his second term, um, one of the primary issues that he wants to address, along with immigration reform, along with the budget and sequestration, um, in addition to the incidents overseas like in Benghazi that he is also addressing. So a lot on his plate right now. Um, he is also trying to cover a lot of ground while he's here in Austin with two executive orders. He wants to create uh, manufacturing hubs that link colleges and universities and community colleges uh, to the industry and he also wants to make government data available um, to entrepreneurs that might be able to use that data to spawn a uh, new business. Um, examples were given like the, the, uh, the Weather Channel where the government data on weather from weather satellites uh, were made available to entrepreneurs and to um, industry leaders. And then the global positioning system. Again, GPS has spawned a number of, uh, of startup businesses. Um, Mike Rollins, once again, the president of the Greater Austin Chamber of Commerce uh, here with us today. Um, anything that you hope to hear from President Obama in his speeches today? Well, I think uh, based on early reports, uh, the president's on the right track. I think creating uh, these uh, innovative hubs, we'll call it, whether it's in manufacturing or the ability to release more government uh, protected property to allow the private sector to create jobs is the right direction to go. We'd like to see the uh, president continue to focus on, you know, in the 
few days from now, uh, we'll be graduating a lot of highly trained, highly skilled uh, college graduates, many of which we're going to be sending back home to compete against us. So the immigration high skill reform is critically important for us in the Austin area and I think the country. We'd love to see the president push that across the finish line. And Applied Materials, where he is scheduled to give a speech a little later on this afternoon, is exactly the type of company that President Obama feels can benefit from these uh, manufacturing innovation institutes where you link the schools uh, with the industry. A little bit on uh, President Obama's plan for economic recovery. He wants to uh, get Congress to act and he wants Congress to spend about $50 billion on roads and infrastructure to help create these manufacturing hubs that link uh, colleges and businesses. He also has said he would like to raise the minimum wage from $7.25 an hour to $9 an hour. Just some of the bullet points that he hopes to establish in his economic recovery plan.